V Gates is like saying, how you doing? Um, okay, we got the two pieces together. Went together really well. Um, it's not going to be a perfect marriage. They never are. But this is something that we can definitely correct. You know, a lot of guys are going to say, oh, why fool with it? Just get a 8 by 4 and cut it down to 6 feet. You can do that. You can certainly do that. I'm a little on the picky side. I like to have things the way I want them um, as much as possible. So we get uh, a 6x6, six six, which I love playing on, so I'm going to keep it 6x6. Six six. So, we're getting back to what I'm going to do. I went out to the shop, got myself a just a, uh, like a trowel, and obviously when we brush Elmer's glue, put the sand on, and then wet, wet glue it with a spray bottle, um, we'll be able to hide that. You won't even be able to see that. But something I got to thinking about, since I have plenty of Loctite, I wanted to get my caulk gun. I was going to just go right down this crack, and then what I was going to do is I was going to take this and just smooth it. And that will also get more glue down into the crack, help with the bonding process. And the other thing we'll be doing is the tape. That will give it some more stability. And uh, once we get this glued, sanded, flocked, it's going to be a very nice, hard, sturdy board that you could play on for years and years and years. Maybe someday my grandkids will be playing on it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do at this point. My camera back here. I got my camera's got a little mini tripod. Don't you just love Yorkshire Terriers? I've got two male Yorkshire Terriers, and I will tell you from a hard experience that you do not ever want to buy two male dogs. And why is that you say crazy German? The reason for that is male dogs have a tendency to mark. Oh! Looks like we had a clog in there. That's right, we'll grab that. <laughs> so you're witnessing hobby at its finest right here. We're going to shoot that down inside that crack. I'm going to get the stuff that shot. I'm going to Put it into the cracks. We got a way of carrying here so you can see better. Just scoop it up and just work it just like you would any type of caulk right into the cracks. And run this right down into that crack. Like so. Now I'm going to run it up here. I don't care if I use all of this up because I don't foresee any upcoming projects I'm going to need this. Might as well use it up. So you see, as you go along, sometimes in the hobby business, sometimes you have to improvise and you just come up with ideas. Seem to make sense. The worst thing you can do is try it and it not work, and you just have to try something else. It's certainly not rocket science, but I'm just going to taper that. You know, here's this side's a little higher than this side, so I'm, I'm just working it in this direction. And I think this is really going to do a great job of hiding that seam. Probably even use the stuff to even out little imperfections in the board. Like we've got some spots here where it's gotten scuffed. You can just kind of use it like spackling and fill the spots. So Thanks guys. I'm going to let this dry 
and then we'll be back. All right, we're back, uh, crazy fans. Um, basically, I got to reading the, the Loctite bottle. Um, it's going to be a 24-hour drying period. So this is kind of how it came out. It's, uh, it's going to just need to set up for 24 hours. Today uh, is, is a Saturday. I'm doing this on one of my days off, of course. Being a business owner, I am always seem to be working, but I do have learned over the years when I, uh, when I used to work way too hard and way too long, I realized I needed to start having some downtime. So that's where my hobbies came back into play and things that I like to do. Uh, sailboating, I keep a sailboat at a large lake near us. So we do sailing, we do bicycling as a family. Um, and my wargaming, my painting, I really love the painting side of things. Sorry, Sean, at BTP. Uh, I love watching your guys' videos, but at least until my eyesight starts to go, um, I'll have I'll be doing my own painting. But uh, yeah, my, my hat's off to you, Sean, if you guys want to uh, do your warp portal. I think that's a great idea to generate revenue. You know, keep it like uh, Beast of War, 75, 100 bucks for the year. I think that's pretty cheap. Um, and the people that are going to complain are the people that don't have the extra hundred bucks. And in my way of thinking, I would be thinking about how to go get the extra hundred bucks instead of saying, I don't have it and that's not fair. Okay. Unfortunately, we are, seem to be living in that type of society where it's, um, you know, give, give it to me. And if I can't have it for free or for nothing, um, I'm going to be mad and stomp my feet instead of, the I'm going to go out and slay the beast attitude. What can I do to make more money, to make myself more successful financially, um, you know, so I can get the things that I want to do and have the money uh, to pay for the things I want to do. Um, you know, you can look around here. You can see that I literally have thousands of dollars invested in this in these hobbies. Um, you know, and people say, oh, you know, he's probably from money and his family gave him the money. We, my wife and I started with nothing, okay, nothing, okay. I started with a little pickup truck and she was an office manager and she worked her way up from the receptionist to the office manager, okay. <laughs> Neither one of us have college degrees, but yet I make r a really good living uh, doing what I do because I worked hard at it for a long period of time. And I stuck with it, and uh, we just do really good work. And with a handshake, um, you know, we, we make money. So it can be done. We started with nothing in a little apartment and worked our way up to a large home, a building for our business, um, you know, land. We, have, we own land. We have a boat. We have vehicles that are completely paid for our home is in the process of being almost paid for so you can do it like Sean says you just have to set your mind to it and you have to make a plan and you have to go after it you're not sitting around wishing things to happen is not going to make things happen so I'll get off my little soapbox here and we'll get back to the gaming part uh, you remember last time I was uh we're, we're going over uh, some forces. I am planning on getting into the tournament circuit. So I've been really play testing army lists for Flames of War. And um, I'm currently looking at, for the American forces, it's called the Blood and Guts uh, Battle Book from the Battles of the Lorraine. Now there's some really good army lists in there for the Americans that I really like. Um, I, I really I don't like the German lists in a couple of the books, the New Battle of the Bulge book, and uh, the main reason is obviously it's late war Germans. They're going to be reluctant, trained uh, troops. I personally don't like to play that way, obviously, because obviously I'm not going to take an army like that to a tournament. So, anyways, in a tournament scene, you can pick pretty much any army you want um, from any book published book that's still in, in play. So you can pick from an abundance of books and lists out there to build your perfect force. So what I'm working on here is I'm tweaking this uh, German list, or, or American list. So I kind of just play out games against myself, um, trying to tweak the list a little bit 
and like I was saying last time, I really came down to the realization that um, we really do need to kind of mimic the Germans a little bit because they're so powerful in the way they've constructed their uh, their companies. But I, I come to find out that we really can't, I can't build these platoons of easy eights. Now this is the, the, the uh, American Sherman easy eight, it's called. And it's a M4A4 variant. It came later in the war. It's got the 76 millimeter gun. It's got a beefed up hull. It's got an anti-tank of uh, 12, I believe, where the Germans are going to be 14. So that's what I'm always comparing it against. You see downfield there, there are some Panther tanks. Those are anti-tank of 14. Uh, front armor of 10. I believe these are a front armor of 10. So they're really close. You're getting really close. The problem is, in a lot of these American books, I'm noticing... Um, you can only build like this one. This is a mixed tank platoon. They won't let you field solid easy eights, which, uh, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think you should, I'm sure in the real world, maybe not, I'll have to do some more research, but I would think you could put at least a five tank platoon of easy eights together. But this is a jumbo variant here. This is called Jumbo. This one right here. There's your M4 Jumbo. It's a little wider. It's got a little bit a more aggressive stance. It's got more armor. So I got two Jumbos. I've got an Easy 8 and I got two standard Shermans, which what we would call a mixed tank platoon. And it turns out this isn't going to be legal. I've got to take this platoon and basically make it like this platoon. It's going to end up being mixed. The problem, well, there's advantages and disadvantages to this, okay? So you've got the leading the way, which you can put your, you don't even have to put your, your jumbos in the front necessarily. They could be in the back, and the first hit I get to my platoon, I can allocate to the jumbo tank, right? That's a rule, special rule for the Americans. So that's part of just learning how to play your force effectively. I also have a platoon of Hellcats, and those are here. Let me show you one of those, what those look like for those of you that are new to the game. There's your Hellcat. It's basically a tank destroyer. It's got an open turret with the crew in the top. The problem with these is they're very light on armor. Uh, I believe they have an anti-tank of 10, which isn't that great up against German tanks. <coughs> Their advantage is they can use ambush. So they use a recon unit, which is going to be this Jeep and a recon vehicle. And they can go and spring an ambush, and then that turn you can basically bring these four Hellcats out. And if you can flank the Germans, who are down here, if we can get this battle going so where I can flank those Germans with those recon vehicles, and I can get an ambush from the side of the of their side armor, where they're obviously the weakest, or the rear is even better. Um, they actually have a chance of taking those tanks out. So, um, combined with my artillery firing top shots, because top armor on most tanks is going to be a one, so it's obviously very weak on the top. So artillery is going to be something I'm going to need to look at taking tanks out with. And then my armored platoons, with the, they've got bazookas, they've got a mortar team, they've got an anti-tank gun, and they've got some standard, these two blue up in the front are just going to be your standard uh, infantry. Those are what we're going to need to go against the German infantry that's coming up at half tracks also. So it's almost like... Um, I'm trying to think of it as force for force. Now in a tournament, I'm probably not going to come up against this, obviously, this exact force. But I think I'm starting to get to the point where if I could get these two partial tank platoons and I got my Hellcats and I've got my two platoons. I can't use three, although I'm going to build a third one just for giggles since I've got the parts. You can't use three armored uh, platoons, so I can only use two. I may convert one of those.